Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I did my best to hide it with some pre-scheduled videos, but I've been away on an extended work trip for a while. So first off, big thanks to everyone who continued to watch the videos, leave comments, and send me messages while I was away. Now that I'm home, you can expect the pace of the videos and the cast to pick up again. For this one, this is a perfect re-intro to the game for me. The 2v2 on Pacino Farmlands between two outstanding arranged teams, and it felt a little bit like a re uh, remix of the Olympics, with one team from South Korea and one from Hungary. As the Axis, Team Hungary, we got Mule ranked 13 with the uh, Wehrmacht using the Luftwaffe Battle Group and his teammate Lancer ranked 122 with the DAC using the Armored Support Battle Group. Then on the Allied side, Team Korea, we got Nottingham ranked number 81 uh, with the UK playing as the Indian Artillery Battle Group and his teammate Odung ranked number 38 with the US using the Armored Battle Group. Help me shake off the rust for this cast is my boy Garrett from the channel Turtle War. I'll post a link to his channel in the description down below. He posts a lot of his own gameplay and has actually been streaming Space Marine 2 lately, which looks awesome. Uh, this match features really dynamic attacking gameplay. Both sides push aggressively from the start, uh, and then they just get more and more intense from there. I really love casting this one. It was great as a first game back. I hope you enjoy it too. And with that, on to the video. All right, everyone, we are back. I'm I'm actually back. I'm here, and uh, for my first one back, I wanted to grab Garrett because uh, we're doing a two v two here. This is you know in the spirit of the Olympics, Team South Korea versus Team Hungary. Um, on the the bottom of the map, we got in Teal Odung playing the Americans, uh, immediately going for an engineer and a jeep, and then we've got Notting in his uh, his partner playing the Brits, getting a second sapper, and he's in the blue. And then, as you saw, Mule, the Wehrmacht player, already going low off the battle group. He's in the purple. He dropped some fall shrimp piles on this fuel point, immediately digging in. Um, that'll be interesting. And then Lancer uh, in red, also from Team Hungary. Uh, he's playing as the DAC, and he's going with a very heavy Panzer Grenadier opening. So, Garrett, I know I've been out for a minute. Uh, what have I missed? Dude, honestly... I feel like the the meta has kind of stayed the same. I have not noticed uh, one way or another much stuff changing. Interesting. So so still, I mean, the light vehicle play has been really powerful. Yeah. Um, the I think DAC infantry. Uh, a couple of people have been saying they're very strong now. I think they've always been strong, but the TTK changes just made them that much more uh, effective, and they help them scale later. Um, yeah, I think it, it helps uh, the also the 250, the combined arms, all that. So it just it just makes them even stronger. Uh, we haven't seen Lancer get out of 250 yet, but I'm I'm sure that'll be coming out soon. Yeah, and it looks like I mean Axe is going to take both fuels here, and uh, so the Allies are really diverting over to the east side of the map, focus on this fighting position, um, and the Falsh Empire is naturally going to back up. Here comes the jeep trying to force them off. And they're gonna try to run and... Are they gonna get back into the... No, they're not. Oh. Really nice setup here between the jeep, the engineers, and the scouts. And so those false empires uh, take a lot of damage to force up. And here come the rifles onto the uh, grenadiers. I imagine Notting is gonna immediately bombard this house with the mortar as well. And you do see Lancer pushing on the opposite side. Uh, here's the 250, and he's teching up as well. Um, and he just has all those all those units in one big blob. It's it's going to be tough to get rid of that. Uh, nobody has an MG yet. Nothing to suppress. Yeah, Allies on a little bit of the back foot, but a nice combined push here on the right hand side to recover that fuel. The problem is they're just going to be down in terms of uh, resources for quite a bit. So, so Lancer going uh, light mechanized company, obviously, uh, or light support company, excuse me. Mule's going for the Panzer Grenadier company. We got a Brit recon section in the church. And then, yep, here's the 250 with the, uh, and he's already going combat half tracks. So we're going to see the 250 slash 9. I'd, I'd be willing to bet. Yeah, I'd. That's that's almost a guarantee, or at least for me when I play DAC, I, I try to always get those out. Yeah, well, but good infantry push here, um, and just a little bit of support from sappers in that mortar has allowed the allies to retake this right side fuel. So, 
Uh, really good, smart team play. You see a little bit of counter capping on the west side of the map by Nottingham. in. And so you can tell these guys are used to playing together. That was a really seamless push by the allies to recover that. Lanzer, even though he has the munitions, he's not upgrading the auto cannon yet. If he did, he could have probably taken on those sections in the middle. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm a little confused why he took that half track all the way back to base. Oh, so he can Healing. heal everything. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and then as soon as one of these, uh, as soon as one of these Grens gets a little bit of veterancy, he'll recover. But look at how aggressive Odong's being. They're capping all the way up to the fuel in the northeast corner of the map. And so they're, they're not denying that the Axis their primary fuel, but man, they are just capping up everything while the Axis kind of recover. And then here's the downside to the DAC and playing upgrade heavy is they don't have a ton of field presence, right? The one, the 250 and uh, Panzer Pioneers and two Panzer Grands. Oh. Yeah, five minutes in, it's a little, it's a little small of a force. Yeah. Now the Falsch Empire is going for the LMG upgrade, which I think is interesting. That uh, that grenade launcher just hit so hard. Yeah, these riflemen. Yep, they wisely retreat. Rifles. Um. Oh, the Panzergrens beat him into the building. I guess no grenades yet. Here's the mortar. Oh, that's unfortunate. The mortar round hits the the building with the right our infantry section in it. All right. Another so, race for the building. Oh, they switched. These garrisons, though. So, Odong obviously has gone armored into the infantry support center. He's got three rifles out. Um, now you've got Mule making good use of this fighting position again to counter cap the fuel. And here comes the first eight rod out. Fortunately, I think Odon's in a position where if he wants to challenge the, you know, the eight rod spam with some chaffies, he at least picked the right commander for it. Oh, here's the 250 slash nine. So, yeah, the allied players need some AT here. Sure, they need it quickly here. They're going to be in trouble. Um, this engineer squad could get ran down. Yeah, if they hunt, you got to be concerned about mines, though, especially on the back half. Uh, but here's the Stuart. I think the Stuart will fail pretty well against the 250 uh, and the 8 rod. But yeah, you see the Axis basically counter capping the map. Here come the Pgrins. Oh, you got to get those sections out of there. Yeah, they're just going to bleed manpower. Meanwhile, the Grenadier squad up here forced to, to back off. They take a ton of damage, but don't really drop a model. And with those med kits, that's, so that's no cost there. And now the Falsch and Pio is eventually going to get forced out of this fighting position here. And there they go. They're on retreat. So the allies taking good map control, but they're really not killing too many models. Second eight rad, and then the Panzer Jaegers and a 250 have now hit the field. So now they've got, if he upgrades it, they got a quite a, a force of light vehicles. Or Lancer does. Yeah, he does. And honestly, he could probably just leave the this half track uh, without the upgrade and just because it already has the armor bonus from the combat half tracks. And then you use the Panzer Jaegers to force off the Stewart. Odun going for a Greyhound. Oh, one P Grand Squad gets away with just a sliver of health. <laughs> yeah, this Stuart, uh, not gonna do too well against two eight rods, especially with the Panzer Jaegers in support. Oh man. And these auto cannons just bleeding the British infantry like crazy. Fortunately for the allies, Odung's got pretty decent control of this far side, although here comes a pack 40. Yeah, one more oh. shot like that on the Greyhound and that'll be done. Point 
And this <laughs> Wehrmacht infantry blob just rolling through. These rifles going to get forced to retreat as well. Yep. And these Grens can just heal up this whole blob. But man, Odin continue to be really aggressive. So, yeah, what do you, I mean, you see Nottingham in building a garrison, it just says garrisonable structure. Is he building something? He's only got the one steward, I don't, uh, you know. Here comes the second one out now. Yeah, there's a second one, okay. But I think, you know, over investing in the steward is dangerous. Oh, it looks like a, a regal mine going down here from the half track. Oh, I really like that. Oh, this captain is done. Oh, no. Just mowed down. <laughs> Grand squad reinforcing from the half track as it's under fire. Greyhound's gonna come in to try to support the rifleman, but immediately whiffs the first shot and then is forced to back off before the Pack 40 can shoot. Alright, here we go. Now now I'm starting to see Na is. He's mining up his side. I mean, if I were him, it's gonna be really hard to push off these light vehicles. Mine up your side, have those two stewards swing real quick to purple, and then swing back. Yeah. Well, oh, here, BARs pop, as well as uh, grenades are about to be in play. So these uh, riflemen are going to scale a little better. And then on the opposite side of the map, the Brit infantry are pushing. Panzer Jaeger is taking some casualties. Oh, so he went with the mortar half track. And here come. Oh! Panzer Jaegers go down. I don't think he gets sniped by the infantry. That's crazy. It was just, yeah, that was the lucky shot. Now here's now the double steward. Panzer Pi was trying to lay a mine, but they're going to end up retreating. One eight rod might go down here. There it is. So good push uh, by Nottingham in on his side. He has the vehicle survival package up upgraded. He just didn't pop the smoke. I thought he was going to do it right at the end there. Yeah, and it looks like I think the Greyhound knocked out a Pioneer squad uh, from Mule on the far side of the map here. So good pickups for the allies. Um, and then, yeah, continuing to hold on to this fuel, really, really helpful, uh, in keeping them in this game. Not Ningen getting a six pounder out now, uh, and Lancer, I mean, he's playing hard into this tier three build, so he's going for a martyr. I'm, I'm a little bit worried, uh, just about him not having the late game firepower. Like this really heavy tier three build is good. Uh, in terms of support, but like he missed his power spike uh, with the eight rods and lost one. Ooh, scouts just gunned down. Man, the TTK hits even harder than I remember. It's, yeah. Grenadier squads are, it still takes me a while to get used to them. Oh my god. Yeah, it, you know, if they roll a couple hits, they just melt your infantry because the rifles still do 16 damage a shot. I I think Lancer's 250 with the Pio squad just hit a double mine and they both got wiped. No way. Yeah, they, they're gone. Where was that? It was right in the middle of victory point. Oh my god. Oh goodness. Yeah, that's 250. The 259. Well. The Jeep trying to run around and survive here. Uh, the half tracks. Maybe he's got his handbrake on. It's not really moving behind enemy lines. This jeep is going. Oh, he's going to run right into a rub bar. Oh, that's not going to work out for him. We're losing a fuel point. Uh, yep. Jeep's gone. <laughs> and the jeep... <laughs> yeah. Uh, meanwhile, the rifles, they're just not... You can't take even engagements like this. You know, two rifles versus a Gren Squad and a P Gren. Like, the numbers are not in your favor. And the Greyhound is just not getting the hits that it needs. So the Axis, well, they're basically just going to swap fuels because now Nottingham has grabbed up the west side fuel.
And now you see Lanzer, he's not going to build much from his tier 4. He's going straight for armored reserves. So he's got his martyr out. He's got an 8 rod. That 8 rod's got to be more active, I think. He's got another Panzer Jaeger half track, which I think is good against these Stewarts and these Greyhounds, but... Um, yeah, you can see he's kind of couching into the center here. Uh, trying to push with his teammate, Mule. There we go. There's a shot from a 6-pounder onto the 8 rod that backs it up. Man, I feel like the uh, the pushes have been really back and forth, right? Like there's yeah, this has gone all over the place. Meanwhile, Nottingham going for the Grant upgrade, which I honestly I like. And then you you honestly you expect him to take these Stewarts uh, and withdraw and refit. So I mean, we're just a minute or two away from a couple of Grants out on the field. Yeah, and he has his engineers mining up. It's, I mean, he's he's playing it smart because he oh. knows the second those uh, stewards are gone, you know, obviously the Axis players won't know, but they'll be very vulnerable. Now, yeah, there he goes. He's, he's refunding both of them. Yeah. Meanwhile, Pack 40, Ambush Camouflage, uh, should have knocked out the Greyhound, but whiffs its second shot. And so the Greyhound will get away and get repaired by these engineers. Four rifles with BARs. Um... You got a Brum Bear coming over to support the infantry push. Another pack 40 in the back. Ooh. This is this is where I struggle with the US because it's there's nothing you can do to dislodge them. You just don't have the uh, you know the indirect or the call-ins. What a what battle group did he go? He went armored. armored. Yeah. So yeah. you got nothing to call in. No kind of arty. Nothing yeah. to help in this scenario. He's got that mortar team, but it's just not... It doesn't do enough damage getting into the late game. Cool. Yeah, Brumbear bounces a shot from the AT gun. Another shot comes in. And the rifleman getting burned down by these P-Grens. The Grens available to merge as well. And, oh my gosh. The Grens emerge with the Falsham Pios to keep them alive. AT gun shots continue to bounce on the Brum Bear. Yeah, the mortar. I think he mainly he just needs a little bit more sight so he can make this mortar more useful. I'm actually surprised we haven't seen more grenades. You know, a bundle grenade across that hedge would have been really cheeky. They Grand definitely have the munitions. Yeah. Oh, that rifle squad. Man, and good use of the merge. Here comes the Grant to support. Another rifle squad dangerously close to going down, thanks to the Brum Bear. Yeah, so Odung's going to come in here on the flank and save the day. Egrens are going to get out of here. Uh, but the Grant and infantry section, AT guns out of position. And here comes the Greyhound on the flank. If the allies commit to this, they could roll up and do a lot of damage here. The Greyhound gets Panzerfausted twice, so it's got an engine crit. Oh, one infantry section goes down. Good. The engineers up here at the Minesweeper, that's really useful. Veteran pack is cleared. So they're identifying some of these mines. Oh, a T-gun smoke and eight rod. Greyhound goes down. Wow, holy cow. That was a monster engagement. What a what a series of trades. Oh my right? god. Yeah. Another grant on the way out for Nottingham. And Lancer able to capitalize on the big flank. And so he's gonna grab this fuel. He's grabbing the, the center and the west side VPs. So uh despite some good hits there, very much in favor of the access on in that last engagement. And Lanzer's uh, about 80 seconds out from calling in any form of the, uh, you know, Panzer, the assault groups or a Tiger. Yeah, he's, is it, it's 200 fuel now for a DAC Tiger, correct? Uh, 220. 220. So he's still a full two minutes away from yeah. having the fuel. He would have the fuel to call in a Panzer IV if he, if he wants to. He's 60 seconds away now. Does he, I mean, Panzer IV, does he have a bunch of the upgrades? 
That would be the. Uh, I would I would only call in a Panzer four at this point if I if I had a couple of the upgrades. He does not. He doesn't have any of them. Yeah, and here we, we have a uh, looks like an easy eight coming out for Odung. But man, another squad of Panzer Grenadiers. I wonder. No, he just built a, another squad there. I was wondering if he uh, swapped out his Grenadiers for it. Interesting because other than that first squad of Falsham Pies, we really haven't seen much from the Luftwaffe commander here. EZ8 hits the field now. Here come two Grants, and lands are forced into a full on retreat. He's got a Martyr uh, to provide some support, but that Martyr, if it, yep, and he's backing it up. If he's not careful, it's going to get run down by these Grants. So, Nottening in again, uh, taking control of the west side of the map here. Now these Fulsham Pios can just repair this fighting position and then use it um, if they wanted to. But again, the allies are going to be a little short on fuel. And uh, yeah, and here's here you see the strategy. So Odong pushing through the middle with his AT guns and his Easy 8 And then he's got his rifles. Yeah, it looks like they're going to make a big push on the west side of the map here. Meanwhile, the, the Axis all back in the base repairing and healing. That lack of field presence... It's gonna hurt. Um, here you go. Here's Mule swinging in from the east. I think, you know, this is something that... From like a 2v2 perspective, you see all these infantry units together. Is that you don't see that as much in 1v1 because you, you have to maintain so much map control. But when you have a teammate, now you see all these units kind of clumped up. And when you can communicate and yeah, you can coordinate your pushes. And it really accelerates the TTK, so you use infantry. Martyr in the rear. Oh, these Grants have to be careful. Oh my goodness. The double six pounder knocks out the Martyr and the Grants back off before the pack 40s can set up. Meanwhile, on the opposite flank, the Brumbear comes into the center. Um, yeah, it does very little damage to this EZ-8. And the tiger has hit the field. Oh boy. So that's the question. Is but is that going to be enough? They've got a couple of AT guns, uh, but the martyr going down. You basically I, just. I think the the field presence. Yeah, it's it's still going to be his problem. He's going to have an isolated tiger with no support. Yeah. You now a little bit less risky. Oh wow, they found another big AT mine there. Good thing they got these engineers out. He's going to try to blow it up with the EZ-8. Yeah, two M1s in the back and then two six-pounders on the side. So there's plenty of AT uh, for the allies here. Um, and they've got the multi-roll tanks with the Grants and the EZ-8 as opposed to the Brumbearer. Now two Brumbearers for Mule. Oh, if they knock down this building, the Grens get out in time. Oh, just in time. Second easy eight hits the field. Oh, the Grand Lancer. Lancer unfortunately lets a Panzerjäger squad get burned by those Grants. Oh, they just hit so hard, so quickly. Pack 40 in the back, chipping away at the Grant. Here comes the Tiger. And the Tiger's already taken a bunch of damage. Oh, yeah, he's got to get the Panzer Grenadiers out of there. Uh, Mule having a little bit more success pushing against the Americans. Pack 40 pens the easy 8 Oh, the Falsham Pios. And they get out of there with just a shred of health. Man. RNG makes this game really frustrating to play, but interesting as hell to watch. <laughs> Uh, I like the double mortar half track here. I think that's a good play, especially with these AT guns. The problem is just the micro attacks. Oh, and we see the uh, the six pounder with the the dug in uh, from the most from the latest update. I think that's smart. It'll help it last a little bit longer against this uh, this tiger. Yeah, I'm a I'm a huge fan of that new vet ability. Oh my goodness, that tiger just loses a huge chunk of health between the six pounders and the grants fortunately mule pushing really really strongly in the center here he's kind of swept over and you can see odung's trying to make up his mind 
And here come the foot guards. Oh, nice use of the bundle under the mortar. It doesn't clear it, but it takes a lot of damage. Now the Brit's coming across. Knock out a pack 40. Yeah, that tiger's got to be careful with those AT guns in support. Oh, they knock out... Oh, and here comes... Uh, looks like a strafing run. It's the fragmentation bomb. Oh, good. Man, wow. I love the placement, but they, the AT guns just get away. Rifles move up, knock out the other pack 40. They eat a couple of shots. Uh, oh my goodness, this... Brumbear already engine critted. Two AT guns in the back, two easy eights. Bounces a couple of shots. Oh, but the double vet Brumbear. Does Grants need to close in? He, he could help finish off fuel right now. Yeah, they knock out one. Pack 40 gets picked up, immediately swings. But there we go. Wait, pack 40 knocked out by the, the M1 AT guns. And they're going to back up before the Brumbear can hit them. And this is, I mean, this is smart, having your easy 8s fight the Brumbear. Oh, man. It's just getting oh, no. chunked down. Now, here's the Tiger to support. Easy 8, one is forced to back up. Yeah, the other one's going to think better of this engagement. Ooh. Yeah, man, you really wish these three Grants could swing in from the side and just grab this Tiger. Now, Odung, weirdly enough, is that a... A quad mount? I guess maybe he's worried about the Luftwaffe, the air power? He's worried about the loiter coming in eventually, and also he he may not be able to tell, but Lancer can call in a loiter as well. Did he go, he went armored support? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thanks for keeping track of all that. You know, when I use this overlay, I don't have access to the same amount of info that I do in 1v1s, but that's why you pick a badass co-caster like Garrett and covered yeah. Alan on my lack of awareness. So we got. I, I have been waiting though. I've been waiting to see the loiters get popped because he's, they've been they've both been able to use them for a while. So did he did he go with the loiter versus the dive bomb? Uh, let me check. Let me go over real quick. Man, Lancer's floating a bunch of manpower. I would be upgrading the crap out of this tiger. Yeah, he did go with the loiter. I just realized Mule didn't, though. Mule went with the fragmentation bombs. Oh, okay. Yeah. Man, they are exclusive. You can tell I haven't, I haven't played the game in a minute. That's more like it. Sherman Easy 8 wow. A third Easy 8. So this is the danger for the Axis, right? Is uh, You start to get a critical mass at Easy 8s and Grants, and there's just too much mobility to deal with unless you can, unless you can set up the engagement that you want. So the axe is starting to kind of turtle up here in the middle. You got a pack 40, you got a brum bear, um, a couple of mortar tracks and a tiger, right? Odung pushing on the flank. And they just got to be careful with these grants and this uh, foot guard and the AT guns on the west flank. Um, if they swing through, they could do a lot of damage. Oh man, those rifles immediately force off by the brum bear and the pegrins. And here comes an easy eight. In a second. Oh, and here comes the grant board as well. Yeah. And this is what I was worried about. Oh, four of them now. Even that tiger is going to... Oh, my God. Pegrin's just annihilated. Pack 40 in the rear to provide support. But if the grants push... All right. And here's the P4 for Lanzer. Man, but those Grants on the flank are dangerous. And then you've got the Easy 8s trying to chase down the Gren squad. The Axis Reorion on the west, so they see the threat here posed by Nottingham. Now, these double AT guns, you got to be using the Napalm rounds on those mortar half-tracks. Clear these six-pounders. There's just so much going on. God, this feels like Kursk. <laughs> the way the, uh, you just got the allies and they've, they've funneled uh, the Axis here into this pocket and they're just collapsing both sides at the same time. 
and they can't they can't decide which way they want to face. Yeah, and like even this pack 40 is just gonna get cleared. It does some damage. The grants on the flank. Oh my gosh! And then here come the easy eights. And here's the loiter. So a fragmentation bomb and a loiter. One easy eight knocked out. And both, both six pounders cleared. So good use of the call-ins. Engineers go down. Great use of the call-ins to counter the push. The P4 knocked out by the EZ8. This quad 50 in the back doing lots of shooting and not killing anything. The pump bar has just been soloing four grants. This yeah. is crazy. Oh my goodness. It's Every still shot yeah. bouncing. There it gets knocked out. Oh, the falchion pilots are done. Yeah, as you can see, the Grant was the best tank in World War II. <laughs> Tiger, thanks to his armor, holding up okay. Oh, it's gotta be Pushing careful. a little too far forward. Yeah. The white phosphorus round from the EZ-8 to blind it. Grant's here on the flank. There's a P3 in support and a Pack 40, but it's out of position. The Grants are gonna press, it looks like. And just bouncing so many shots. One Grant goes down to the P3. Now the Tiger pushing back up. He's gotta be careful of the foot guards. Oh. Oh, that infantry section. Gunned down by the P Grants. Here's the easy hit. Wow. Holy cow. So we have, what, one EZ-8, one P4, one Brumbar, two Grants. It's a lot of other units. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, all, all Knots AT guns gone. Wow. That was violent. That was... That was epic. And it didn't decide anything. <laughs> no, they're now they're all just kind of crippled. They're just on their knees. Yeah, so here we got a howitzer going in for knotting in. Um, this is this is really interesting. You got another Easy Eight coming out. The rifles just not scaling as well as you'd like between the Brum Bears and the uh, the Pegrans, but the both Brum Bears are gone. Another one just hit the field. Uh, Gren's healing up the infantry here. Man, I will say the Allies done a good job kind of counter capping throughout that entire engagement. They have a huge resource advantage at the moment. Uh, Lancer has almost no fuel. He's building that pack 88. So if this Tiger does go down, it's not going to get replaced for a while, especially if the Allies can continue to put pressure on it. Yeah, pack 40 cleared. Those, uh, he's got another quad mount. Really worried about those loiters. Oh, the howitzer firing on, on Lancer's base. Or no, yeah. that's a 5.5, sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's the 5.5 from the, the base sector. A little bit cheesy, but I understand the frustration, right? The Allies been trying, they've been throwing haymaker after haymaker. Odung going for advanced logistics here. It's a little bit late, but it'll probably help uh, him kind of weather some of these manpower losses because his, otherwise his rifle is just not going to scale against the Pegrin. Foot guards soloing uh, in assault grants. And they're doing a, just a fine. <laughs> yeah, we can talk about the balance of foot guards later. <laughs> they are very, they're my favorite Brit unit right now. Oh god, they're just... They're very strong. Enemy is down to only one. Supplies are cut off. We have holes in our front line. Nottingham in throwing down a bunch of uh, AT mines, looks like. Oh, easy A's find some grenadiers. One more volley. Oh, the heavy, the regal. A hard engine crit on one of the easy eights. But. The rest of the Wehrmacht force mules not in position to to punish, so the engineer is going to repair here. Mule has been keeping those mines late. He's got actually two of them stacked on top of each other, uh, near where his his two five one is right now. Mm -hmm.
Here's the Brum Bear. Oh, he's got to be careful. Double AT gun and three easy aids. Fortunately, the front armor on that Brum Bear just keeps bouncing shots. Rifles are going to back up. Here's the pack 40 is going to set up on these easy eights, but there's no sight just yet. And now a six pounder coming up. Grenadiers push in with the Brum Bear. Oof. Brum Bear just absorbing AT gun rounds. Good use of the mortar uh, air bursts to knock down the six pounder. It's clear. Brum Bear gets knocked out by the AT guns. Now the easy eights. Oh, mortar gets knocked out. I didn't even see that. That's oh from the uh, the DAC mortar half packs. Oh, now 88 set up. The easy eights thought about chasing that Pgran squad. Oh, the 88 knocks one of the, uh, the easy eights out. All right, so the axe is shifting over to the east side of the map and honestly getting a couple of good trades here. Looks like they're going to let Nottingham have the west side with his uh, Grant horde. Yeah, I'd say at this point in the game, you just got to choose your two VPs and try to make a pocket around them and do what you can. Yeah. And the easy eights, they do a lot of damage, but they're also pretty squishy against these pack 40s. The three of them over, well, two and a six pounder. Plus the 88 and the Tiger. <laughs> Lanzer's, uh, <laughs> Lanzer's T1 building has been destroyed, I think. Or was that not his T1? One of his buildings that he constructed. Oh, it was the T3 building. Oh, it's that. Been annihilated by the 5.5. <laughs> That's tilting. <laughs> well, I'd hope he wasn't going to call in any more martyrs or. Yeah, but it, it does start to mess with your ability to get upgrades. All right, here comes the grant swarm on the flank they could catch this panzer three out there's a second one. Oh, he's doing a base dive that's what this is that's evil oh, oh my god yeah. he is oh one rifle squad in serious danger of going down to the panzer grenadiers they're gonna get barely get away oh bono oh, grenade yeah, they these grants are gonna they can they can tear down his whole base the whole base one rifle squad goes down here's the tiger and the axe is just out of position and they're gonna lose everything here to these grants and these panzer grenadiers also gonna get annihilated on retreat and the axis players just trying to knock out odom's army here and i don't think that's gonna be a fair trade Man. And the Tiger and two P3s advancing. This is nuts. Now you got both sides going for an absolute haymaker. The Axis, the DAC base is almost completely destroyed. And they're basically forced to swing deep into allied territory to try to, to return the favor. Now you see a bunch of AT guns headed over. Maybe they're trying to punish the Grants. I don't think that's going to work. And now here you go. Tiger and two P3s advancing into the uh, US base. One easy and very close to going down. Engineers get annihilated. Ooh. Oh, and now here come the Grants. Two easy eights gone. Oh, the fragmentation bomb kills three rifle squads. What is this game? P3 and the tiger are trying to hunt down the grand. The easy eights have been annihilated. Odong has nothing left except for these half tracks. But now here comes the grant train. And the tiger finally gets knocked out. Meanwhile, the quad mount, one gets gets run down by this, uh, oh my gosh, four AT guns for the access. Yeah, that's going to melt that grant. Oh, holy cow. 
One gets knocked out. Seriously, we're at the point where these guys are going for base shots? <laughs> and here's Don't drop it. Get that flak 30 out of there. Get it out of there. Oh my gosh. Well, the flak's permanently set up there now. Here comes the airburst barrage from the Indian artillery. One easy eight on the field. I think the allies, they're like debating. They want to knock out the flak. They knock out the 36. Okay. Uh oh. That's a wrecker. And it's going straight for the tiger. <laughs> oh. So the, the Axis, uh, now on the triple cap, with uh, the Allies only have 173 VPs. So if they can hold this triple cap, they'll be in a good spot. Grant pushing out, but he's got to be careful because if these AT guns set up, well, he's got support from the EZ-8. Oh, yeah. That pack 40's done. Here's the Brum Bear, but it's not... It's not going to do much. It's just a trail of AT guns. Yeah. There we go. Now two AT guns shooting at the EZ-8. EZ-8 is going to back up. So the Axes are going to maintain the VP control here, even with the Grant. Oh, uh, the Wrecker is not going for the Tiger. Actually not sure what it's doing. Probably going to repair this EZ-8 here. E4 uses smoke to break contact. Yeah, Axis got the triple cap here. This is uh, this is dangerous for the allies. Those last couple engagements were catastrophic for both sides. But the big difference here is Mule still has his tier four out. So he can still, and he's got 300 some fuel. So he can still pump out Brumbears, Panzer fours. And uh, I don't even know what it'll do to Lancer if it'll if he's got to repair his headquarters first, or like what I, the deal I, is? I'm not. I don't think you can. I think he's stuck with the T. He's stuck with the light support building. I I believe. But he's got. So he, he's got he's his got a thousand manpower. Out. Yeah. Contact. He he can call in some units. But I don't know what he what his plan is. Why he's. And he's not he's even repairing the headquarters. Off. He's repairing his. He's getting some Panzer Jaegers out apparently. I don't. I. I may oh. be wrong, but I'm pretty sure if once it's gone, it's gone. You can't repair it. Your headquarters. Well, his teammates got to do it then, right? Or you just I can't repair it at all? Well, I don't think you can repair it. I, I may be wrong about that, but for some reason, Relic made it so once it's gone, it's just gone. Well, the Allies, the Americans officially have a Tiger. So just repairing <laughs> it in base. Oh, base diving with a Tiger against the armor battle group. Real risky. <laughs> Here comes the howitzer. It's shooting at the center at these AT guns. Oh, that building saved those mortar tracks from getting eating a 5.5 inch round. He's just not moving his units though. What is he waiting for? I don't, I don't know. You got a couple of grants over on the flank, right? The allies got rid of the triple cap, but the VP's even about, about 50 either way. So the allies have to make a push here soon. I mean, having a tiger helps, but a tiger is slow. So I think Nottingham's got to hold on to the west side of the map here if they have any chance of winning this. Now, yeah. So it looks like Lanzer's really focusing on AT. A couple of pack 38s coming out, Panzer Jaeger, and he's got his P4. And here comes the American tiger. Oh. It's shot bounces on the Brum Bear. Get out of here. Now supported by the EZ-8. Oh, and here comes the Airburst Artillery. Tiger backing out. Now. Okay, so the AT guns forced to back up. There's a second Brumbear that's just focused on holding that East VP. Oh, he's just recovering all these damaged vehicles. So he's basically getting his... Uh, Odin's getting his vehicles back for half price. One Brumbear goes down. Here comes the Loiter.
The Grants are getting targeted, but they're doing a lot of work against these AT guns. They're able to clear them. Yep. The Tiger and the Sherman, uh, actually, it's a relatively safe fight against the Brum Bear. Pioneers dive into the middle to try to hold the VP. They can't hold it. They get beat up pretty good by these tanks. Half track finally knocked out. Brum Bear at risk of going down here. Yeah, if this shot pens from the EZ-8. He's got to be careful. That P4 in the back could knock out the EZ-8. And he doesn't want to take deflection damage. He's got to move it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Both EZ-8 and the Rum Bear feel like they're, like, one shot away. EZ-8 knocked out by the Rum Bear. That Rum Bear pounced so many shots. Yeah, but the Tiger's going to swing on it here. Side armor, boom. Rum Bear down. And then the Grant's on the flank again. Look at this just sea of beat-up AT guns. Another EZ-8 in the base recovered. Uh, so you've got some Luftwaffe unit coming in. That's Vulture and Pios. And then a fragmentation bombing run. But it's gonna miss. And those Vulture and Pios are gonna get annihilated between the Grant and the Foot Guards. Now the Allies ahead on VPs. And they got two of the three. Another Brum Bear coming out but not in a good spot with the EZ-8 and the Tiger here. And that's it. They're going to call it. The battle is ours. Stand down. All right. So uh, we're back here. Uh, epic, epic game. And I did not know which way that was going to go. Um, I know we have a couple things to talk about here. So, so starting with the Axis, um, Lancer played really, really heavily into Tier 3. Uh, and I, I feel like Nottingham did a pretty good job countering that. What did you see? As someone who plays Brits quite a bit, uh, I'd saw I'd I'd say that was for from Knot's perspective that was the typical Brit build. I feel like you start off, you slowly get some units together, you get those your strong main line of sections. Uh, he went for the Stuarts Stuarts first, uh, probably in response to the eight rads on the field, mm -hmm. which. I think Lanzer at first was playing phenomenal. They, you know, at the, at the start of the game, the Axis kind of took the whole map over. Mm -hmm. That P Gun blob with the 250 was uh, very difficult to deal with. And then he gets out two eight rads, he gets the Panzer Jaegers. And I think at a certain point, he had that quick power spike. And then slowly the Brit player just kept building up more and more. He got two Stuarts out. And just kept creeping up, and yeah, he had that engagement where he lost uh, one eight rad and the uh, I think he lost eight rad and the two fifty, yeah. I believe, and maybe yeah. a Panzer Jaeger. And so then, in that quick succession, when he lost those units, the the power spike, which was already slowly fading, dropped, and it was just a gamble that didn't that didn't pay off because of that engagement. Yeah, I mean, I think you're exactly right because if you if he makes maybe a little bit better use of the eight rods, if he avoids the Stuarts, the Stuarts are a good counter to the tier three play, right? Because they're they're pretty chonky. They repair quickly. They handle the eight rods and, and the two fifties for sure. Um, but if you get on the flank and you can set up some sort of ambush, I think what he was really missing was like a hard AT gun. Uh, the Martyr came out a little bit late. That's kind of the downside um, to setting up the way that you do in, into tier three. Uh, so yeah, I think... You know, the Brit had the right answer. I, the problem was, I think, Lancer, he, he was a little bit too much of, like, an anvil. And with that build, with the Tier 3 build, you need to make use of your mobility um, and the high DPS of your units. I think if you want to play heavy in the center and try to hold territory, then the Pegrins are great, but then maybe you invest into the Flak for Ling and a couple of AT guns, and you play more of the, the Tier 2 style. Um so that was interesting. I I did appreciate his uh, transition to armored reserves relatively early. Um, but like we talked about, they looked like they were lacking a little bit for map presence. And so while the allies really felt like they could constantly push on like all three VPs, the Axis basically had to pick two. Um, and with the exception of kind of the end game there, 
uh, when you had both people throwing base shots, um, <laughs> they never really had the triple cap, right? Uh, yeah. So uh, we'll just roll right into it. The uh, the base shots. Um, first off, I mean the balls are nodding in to say, you know what? I've got four grants. I could try to flank uh, the other team, but instead I'm just going to go for their base and wipe it clean. Um, it, I mean, it worked, and then you saw the the axis just respond with a base dive of their own. So it, I think they came very, very close to pulling it off. What did they do? What do they need to do differently in that situation? You think? I think uh, Lanzer needs to be again. I'm not trying to pick on him, but I, it was his tiger and his P threes that dove in there, mm-hmm. and it was almost it felt. Uh, a little too fast. I I think he did make the right call because you're. What's the point in pulling all your units back and going back to like your base is gone? Yeah. You know, you're you can't get that back. Yeah. So he made the right call. He's got to he's got to push on uh on the U.S. player and try to get rid of those easy eights, which he did. But I think he he kept pushing a little too far, and then kind of sat in uh Knott's base. Mm-hmm. And if he waited a little bit longer for Mule and the rest of the AT guns to pull up, which they eventually did, mm-hmm. but it just was the timing didn't line up perfectly where uh, Mule has those AT guns pointed at the direction that the grants are coming from. Yeah. And then the grants are in between a kind of hurt tiger that they need to chase or AT guns they need to back away from. And, the, you know, it, yeah. it kind of just didn't play out perfectly. But it, it almost did. It and almost especially did. once that flak got up there. If you would have parked that flak a further, you know, 50 feet backwards, I think that thing could have took pot shots at him all day. Yeah, because it can shoot way further than it can see, right? So you got other stuff yeah. spotting for it. Uh, Mule, the fragmentation bomb under the rifle squad. Like, man, you want to talk about a knockout blow? Uh, the entire, like, three rifle squads gone in one shot. All the easy eights gone. You know, unlucky for the Axis that he picked the armored commander so he could just call the wrecker out, which like I love. I wish I wish there was more record play in this game. Um, <laughs> so then you see the the American Tiger, which actually was really helpful uh, afterwards, right? If he had recovered like two or three of the Easy Eight wrecks, like okay, that's helpful. But the Tiger able to bounce the shots from the Pack Forties and the Six Pounders in the middle, fighting with that VP, able to square up with the Brum Bears, the extra damage because I think its main gun does two forty instead of 120 right it's like double the damage yeah of a, a regular tank on shot so really really helpful to have and then obviously with the uh the DAC player's base gone he can only call in so much um yeah i yeah if they time that up just just a little bit better and those pack 40s are set up when the grants arrive i, I think you're right i think they just get cut down and then Suddenly, you've got two players with empty bases and and a couple of units <laughs> left units left fighting over the last couple of VPs. I mean, uh, res- respect to Lanzer and Mule <laughs> for having their their bases get destroyed and still like I'm not giving like I'm not man I I would have threw that GG and just quit. I would have been so frustrated. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You see four grants, four grants like on your doorstep. Like yeah, okay, <laughs> all right, you can have this one. Um, yeah, that was that was pretty awesome. Um, I do want to call out, I love uh, Odung thinking ahead. Like, hey, we've got Luftwaffe. Um, they saw, at one point, they saw the armored support loiter. Okay. I need two quad mounts for AA. Uh, unfortunately, they are worthless against airplanes for some reason. So, Relic, please fix. Um, yeah. Anything else? I, I thought the play was really good. I appreciated that, uh, that both guys are swinging for the fences the whole time. Right? Pretty dynamic. Um not conservative at all. <laughs> he had a lot of stuff get annihilated this game. God, I don't know how many Brum Bears that guy built. Yeah, Dude. both both had great micro. They they both would always capitalize when the chance was there to cap up mm-hmm. uh, whatever territory was available. They do they do it. They mine up. There are so many mines. I mean, yeah, phenomenal, phenomenal game. Yeah, awesome. Hey, well, Garrett, really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, this is a great one to come back to uh, for everyone that sent it in. Thank you very much. Um, and that's going to do it for us here.